do start tonight with the very latest on Empire actor Jesse Smollett. He claimed that two late night pro Trump racists tied a noose around his neck, doused him in a chemical, all while shouting racist and homophobic slurs. But now the actor has lawyered up. He's now refusing to meet with police, as multiple outlets now reporting that Smollett paid two acquaintances to stage the alleged assault, and they even rehearsed it. Those two men are now reportedly cooperating with investigators, and Smollett, he appears to be in big, big trouble. Now, in the state of Illinois, filing a false police report, that's a felony punishable by up to three years in prison. And remember, the threatening racist letter filled with white substance, if there's any chance that Smollett received that prior to the attack, that there are reports, maybe the FBI is investigating if he might have been involved in that. If that happened, if he's responsible, well, he could also face federal felony charges. Joining us now with the very latest on the Smollett case, Fox 32 reporter Raffer Wijol is with us. Uh, Raffer, good to see you. You have been in the forefront of breaking a lot of these stories, skeptical at first, unlike a lot of the national media, and I got to give you a lot of credit for that because uh, there's been some horrific reporting in this case. Um, but no, you're absolutely right. Very early on with this case, uh, Sean, I was very skeptical because Chicago police were skeptical. You know, we were very careful at Fox 32 News to report that Jesse Smollett says he was attacked because we weren't there. We don't know if he was attacked. And, you know, normally I defend my profession, but yes, the national media that ran with the headline, Jesse Smollett was attacked. That's journalism 101. I mean, it's the old adage, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Police also told me that they were very skeptical given the nature of this, the, the red hats, the bleach, the rope, and the location in Streeterville. I voiced that skepticism publicly on Twitter. I did get some backlash, and now it appears that there might be uh, some merit to that skepticism. As for the very latest on the case right now, the very latest is the, this is the big news now. State's Attorney Kim Fox, a Democrat, announcing that she has recused herself from this case. I can tell you that this blindsided Chicago police. She just released a statement a moment ago basically saying that out of impartia impartiality that uh, there could have been, uh, that they had, uh, let me get this right here, that... Um, they wanted to address questions of impartiality based upon familiarity with potential witnesses in this case. So this means that Assistant State's Attorney Joseph Maggots is taking over the case. Today, the two Nigerian brothers went before police and prosecutors at 26th and Cal, the Cook County Courthouse. They were completely brought in in total secrecy. We had every single uh, entrance and exit staked out. We did not see these guys go in and out. The last time somebody was afforded that kind of privilege with police and prosecutors was when Oprah Winfrey went there for jury duty. Um, I did see their, lawyer, see their lawyer, Gloria Schmidt. She walked out of a doorway marked grand jury. I asked her, did her clients go before a grand jury? She simply said, I have no comment. Police then said, no, the men did not testify before a grand jury today, but they are cooperating with police, and they are right now trying to help the police build a case against Jesse Smollett. In the meantime, while all of this is going on, there is a separate investigation altogether. Mind you, the hate letter that was sent to the Empire Studios. That's being handled by the FBI and the, uh, the U.S. Postal Service, the feds. We have no idea where that investigation stands. We've been getting some leaks out of Chicago PD, but that is a whole host of potential trouble for uh, Smollett because now you're looking at federal charges, possibly linked to, to terrorism, completely independent of what might happen with the Chicago PD's case against him. Rayford, let me ask you a question here. Uh, the, the Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox's recusal. Uh, somebody sent me, and I don't know if you know the truth of this, and I'm asking, do you know that she has endorsed Kamala Harris? I'm excited she ran for, is running for president. I would not be where I am today without her guidance, et cetera. Does any of this have to do with politics, presidential politics? Well, it, it could be politics, but it really could be something as simple as she knows Jesse Smollett. If she knows Kamala Harris, as you know, Smollett has uh, campaigned with Harris. You know, Kim Fox, it's no secret, has aspirations of higher office. And perhaps she didn't want to deal with any sort of political ramifications if she has to be the one to send Jesse Smollett well, to jail. maybe she just did the right Ultimately, thing. I, I mean, think maybe she just saw a potential conflict and got out, which uh, might be admirable. And that's absolutely a possibility as well. Her assistant, Joseph Maggots, I do not know him personally, but I know that he's going to uh, competently ha you know, handle this case and try to prosecute Smollett to the full letter of the law if they find enough evidence for him uh, to be guilty.